So, in the continuation of the first and second part of the maxillary artery, now today we will discuss the third part of maxillary artery. Now, you have to first understand that third part of maxillary artery is a very deep portion when you are doing the dissection in the infratemporal fossa and that third part enters into a, a very small fossa which is present between the facial bones behind the, behind the maxilla and that is known as pterygopalatine fossa. So, in this lecture we are not only see the branches of the third part but we will have the orientation of the pterygopalatine fossa also. So, what is the third part? The third part you know that it is known as pterygopalatine part. Now, why it is known as pterygopalatine part? Because this part enters inside the pterygopalatine fossa. Now, this third part is actually the area which is start after the upper border of the lower larger head of lateral pterygoid muscle. Now, it, it gives around 5 branches which accompanying branches of the maxillary now which you have to understand that whenever you are reading the different parts of your maxillary artery you have to understand that maxillary artery is giving the first second and three, third part now the branches of third part of maxillary artery are running along with the branches of maxillary now but if you will see what you will realize that branches of first and second part generally run along with the branches of mandibular nerve. For example, if you will see the inferior alveolar artery, inferior alveolar artery is a branch of second part, but inferior alveolar nerve it is a branch of posterior division of mandibular nerve. So, you have to keep this thing in mind that the upper teeth and the lower teeth both are supplied by the common source of blood that is the maxillary artery but the nerve supply is different. The upper teeth line is supplied by the branches of maxillary nerve because they are maxillary teeth and the mandibular teeth is supplied by the branches of mandibular nerve that is your inferior alveolar nerve. But when you are talking about the source of blood, the supply of blood is in upper teeth as well as lower teeth is coming from the different parts of maxillary artery. So, this is the important thing which is very commonly asked question in your exam that in pterygopalatine fossa the branches of maxillary artery accompanied with branches of which now answer is maxillary now and not only the now but there is a ganglia also that is known as pterygopalatine ganglia. The main trunk of maxillary artery travels medially through the sphenopalatine foramen where it enters in the nasal cavity as a sphenopalatine artery. Now, this is the question what it says that what is the termination I should say what is the terminal branch or the continuation of your maxillary artery answer is sphenopalatine artery. Now, if you will see here the artery now this is your lower larger head this lower larger head is of lateral pterygoid muscle. So, if you will draw this part, now here you can see that up to this you have the first and second part and this is your third part of your artery. Now, this third part is taking turn medially like this. Now, this medial turn when will take, now this is the terminal portion of the artery which is going medially towards my nose and it enters into the nasal cavity as a sphenopalatine artery. So, the question is that what is the sphenopalatine artery represent? Answer is that it represent continuation, it represent continuation of third part of maxillary artery. Clear? So, this is the first and important thing which you have to always keep in mind. Now, when you will have the pterygopalatine part, you always have the idea about the pterygopalatine fossa. So, in the most medial region of the deep face, it is located where? Now, this is the midline, clear? And we have already cut the mandible, we have removed the lateral pterygoid muscle. Now, when you will see the uh, your uh, pterygoid plates, pterygoid plates is having a small gap on anterior aspect and that is known as pterygomaxillary fissure. Now, through those fissure you will have more medial deeply placed small gaps or the fossa and that is known as pterygopalatine fossa. So, what are the boundaries of pterygopalatine fossa? Anteriorly, posteriorly and medially. So, anteriorly you have the maxilla because I told you that 
Terigo palatine fossa lies behind the maxilla. Now, in this diagram, if you will see that this is your maxilla. Now, this is the posterior part of the maxilla. Now, behind this posterior part of the maxilla, we have this small area and this small area is known as pterygo palatine fossa. Now, this pterygo palatine fossa posteriorly is having this part of sphenoid bone which is known as pterygoid process. These are the lateral and medial pterygoid plates which are the part of the pterygoid process and if you will see medially on the inner side you can see a blue color plate of the bone and that is your uh, perpendicular plate of palatine bone. So anteriorly you have the maxilla, posteriorly you will have the pterygoid process of the sphenoid bone and medially you have perpendicular plate of palatine bone. In this perpendicular plate of palatine bone, you can appreciate a small opening and this small opening is actually known as a sphenopalatine foramen. And this sphenopalatine foramen is very difficult to dissect from the lateral side. If you want to see the sphenopalatine foramen, the better view is that you should cut the nose and open it that I will show in the coming diagrams of this lecture. Now. In the face, if I would like to locate the pterygo palatine fossa on your face, where should I locate? So, in this area, you can see this is the soft part and these are the dry bones on this side. Now, in this dry bone of the, this part, you can see that this is the maxilla. Now, first you should mark the maxilla. Now, this is the maxilla. You have the infraorbital foramen on the maxilla. Now, once you will have this maxilla, this is your inferior orbital fissure. Now this is the inferior orbital fissure and you know that inferior orbital fissure is a communication of your pterygo palatine fossa and infratemporal fossa with the orbit. Now this maxilla is forming the floor of the orbit, clear? So this is the orbit, this is known as floor of the orbit and this floor of the orbit is majorly formed by the maxilla. So this is the first thing which you should understand about the orientation of the structure here. Now where you will find the pterygo palatine fossa. So I told you that the artery is going to enter inside the nasal cavity. So this nasal cavity is making the medial boundary of the pterygo palatine fossa. This is the maxilla which is coming anterior to the pterygo palatine fossa. Then you have the a small gap on the lateral side through which artery will enter inside and anteriorly the fossa communicate through this infra orbital area through the your uh, orbit. So on both the side if you will I will draw you will have these small areas in this part which are not actually in relation to the orbit they are actually behind the maxilla. So, it is not a 3D diagram that is why I am not able to exactly locate this but you should have this idea that these pterygo palatine fossas are present very deep behind the nose as well as in the posterior part of your maxilla. Now here if you will see the exact location now this is your maxilla now this part is your maxilla you can see these are the maxillary teeth. Now when you will see the maxilla, now behind this maxilla you have this portion, I am talking about this portion. So this portion is located behind the maxilla and this is your pterygo palatine fossa which is medially closed by the perpendicular plate of palatine bone and in this plate you have a small foramen that is known as sphenopalatine foramen and this uh, pterygo palatine fossa is having a gate you can say door on its lateral wall and that door is known as pterygo maxillary fissure through which the artery is entering into the fossa. So what are the communication? Now you have to understand the communication of pterygo palatine fossa to understand the branches of third part of maxillary artery. Because I told you in the first video of maxillary artery that the branches of first part and third part of maxillary artery leaves through the different foramens and fissures of the skull bone. So what are the communication? Now when you will see anterior communication, I just told you anteriorly you have the orbit. So anteriorly you have the posterior portion of the maxilla and maxilla is forming the floor of the orbit. And above the floor of, uh, along the upper surface of the floor of orbit, you have the infraorbital fissure. So now you should understand that this is your maxilla. 
Now behind this maxilla, I told you that you have the pterygopalatine fossa. Now in the upper part of the pterygopalatine fossa, you have anterior communication with the orbit. And this communication is having a small fissure is known as inferior orbital fissure. So the first and most important concept that anterior communication answer is inferior orbital fissure. Then you will have posterior communication. Now posteriorly, you have the sphenoid bone and there are two or three foramens and these foramens are going to open into the posterior wall of pterygopalatine fossa and these are known as foramen rotundum and the pterygoid canal. So here in this posterior wall, if you will see, you can appreciate that there is two foramens and these majorly place two foramens is foramen rotundum, foramen rotundum and for a pterygoid canal. So these are the two foramens. Apart from that, you have very small foramen also that is known as palatino-vaginal canal. So these all three foramens are present in the posterior wall of pterygopalatine fossa. So the first and important thing is anteriorly, the pterygopalatine fossa communicate in the upper part through the orbit with the inferior orbital fissure. Posteriorly, you will have the sphenoid bone and in the sphenoid bone posteriorly you will have three foramens from above downward foramen rotundum then pterygoid canal and then palatino vaginal canal now we will see the communication medially i just told you that medially you will have a perpendicular plate of the palatine bone and this perpendicular plate is having a, a small foramen that is known as sphenopalatine foramen and through this sphenopalatine foramen terminal part of the third part of maxillary artery enters as a sphenopalatine artery and it communicated with the nasal cavity then you will have inferior important relation or communication now inferiorly now you have this communication and this is known as palatine canal and through that you have greater palatine artery which is descending downwards along with the greater palatine now. Then you will have lateral communication. Laterally I told you that there is a big gate or the door and that is known as pterygo maxillary fissure and through this fissure the third part of artery enters. So when you will see the fissure where you will find the fissure, fissure is actually the margin of your maxilla and the pterygoid plate and this margins are known as pterygo maxillary fissure so deep to the pterygo maxillary fissure you have the pterygo palatine fossa and this pterygo palatine fossa is medially closed by the bone anteriorly closed by the bone posteriorly closed by the bone roof is having the bone but floor is having a very small thin pipe and that is known as palatine canal and laterally it is having a big fissure and that is known as pterygo maxillary fissure. So the branches of ter in the pterygo palatine fossa course to the other part of the head through these communication. So now in this diagram you can more appreciate the boundaries. Now this is your posterior surface of the maxilla and behind this posterior surface you will have this pterygo palatine fossa and in this pterygo palatine fossa if you will remove this lateral surface if you will remove the lateral part of the orbit if i will remove this lateral part of the orbit then i can see the whole floor of the orbit in this floor i can see that it is communicating with the pterygo palatine fossa and that is known as inferior orbital fissure and when you will see the floor in the floor you will find the groove this is known as infraorbital groove and this groove will come out on the face as an infraorbital foramen so you have to understand the boundaries very well because you should keep in mind that whatever the branches of third part of maxillary artery they will exit through the different foramens of your uh, skull bone. So here it is a zoom part of your uh, pterygo palatine fossa where you can see the posterior wall is having three foramen 1, 2 and 3. Foramen rotundum then you will have palatino vaginal canal, foramen rotundum and pterygoid canal. Medially you will have this gap. This gap is known as sphenopalatine foramen which is present in a perpendicular plate of palatine bone and you have anteriorly you have communication through the orbit that is known as inferior orbital fissure. Now what are the branches? Now the first branch is I am talking about sphenopalatine artery. 
Now, I am saying this again and again that sphenopalatine artery is nothing but it is a terminal continuation of the third part and this sphenopalatine artery enters through the sphenopalatine foramen and you know that sphenopalatine foramen present in the medial wall. So, both side artery enters medially and they will enter into the nasal cavity. So, when you will do the dissection of the nose, particularly when you will open the lateral wall of the nose, you are able to see that in the lateral wall, there is an entry of sphenopalatine artery from the posterior side. So, it enters through the sphenopalatine foramen and it will go to supply the your nasal cavity. Then you will have infraorbital artery. Now, infraorbital artery, we have a communication anteriorly in the upper part of the fossa that is known as inf inferior orbital fissure. So, through that fissure, this artery is going and running into the floor of the orbit, I should say roof of the maxillary sinus and in this, you, it will go into the canal and ultimately comes out on the face from the infraorbital foramen. So, this is the important thing. Now, in the course of this infraorbital uh, through the infraorbital region, here you can see that this is the artery which is entering and running into the inferior part of the orbit, then it enters into the canal, then comes out through the infraorbital foramen. Now, in this course through the floor of the orbit, it gave two more branches, one is here. Now, this is known as anterior superior alveolar artery and sometimes it will give a middle superior alveolar artery. Now, these two arteries will supply the pulp of anterior teeth that means your incisors and canine. So, this is the important thing which you have to understand that there are three superior alveolar artery. Anterior superior and middle superior alveolar are the branches of infraorbital artery and these infraorbital artery is running along with the infraorbital nerve. So, whenever you have the arteries and the nerves, I told you that the third part of maxillary artery branches run along with the branches of maxillary nerve. Now, you have this is the more elaborated diagram where you can see that this is your third part of the maxillary artery. It is taking a medial turn and this is your sphenopalatine foramen. So, it enters inside. Once it will go inside, it will become a sphenopalatine artery. Now, this is your infraorbital artery. It is running into the floor of the orbit. Then it is running into the infraorbital canal. Then it will come out as an infraorbital artery on the face through the infraorbital groove, uh, foramen. Now, here you can see the nerves are also running and this is your infraorbital nerve. So, you have the third branch that is posterior superior alveolar artery. So, you have to understand that there are superior alveolar, superior alveolar artery. Now, these are three superior alveolar, anterior superior alveolar, middle superior alveolar and posterior superior alveolar. Now, anterior superior alveolar and middle superior alveolar are the branches of infraorbital artery. They are the branches of infraorbital artery, which is a branch of third part of axillary artery. While the posterior superior alveolar is an independent branch of third part of maxillary artery. So, this is the basic difference which you have to keep in mind that your upper teeth is supplied by the blood, receiving the blood from the maxillary artery. But the anterior and middle superior alveolar are the branch of infraorbital artery while the posterior superior artery is a direct branch of the third part of maxillary artery. And to, for this posterior superior alveolar, there is a separate foramen. If you will see the posterior part of the maxilla, you will find that there is a separate foramina and through this foramina, posterior superior alveolar artery is going to enter and it will supply the molar and premolar. And it is accompanied by the posterior superior alveolar nerve also, which is going to supply these roots of your molar and premolar teeth. So, this is the very important thing which you have to understand that posterior superior alveolar artery is an independent branch of the third part of maxillary artery, while anterior and middle superior, which are going to supply your remaining teeth of upper line, they are branches of infraorbital artery. Then you will have the greater palatine artery. Now, I told you that there is a lower part communication. Now, this channel is known as 
greater palatine channel or palatine channel. Now through this channel, the artery is going downward and then this artery is coming out and also giving the lesser palatine arteries. So you have to understand that inferiorly, it will go, what is the direction of the greater palatine artery? It will go inferiorly vertically downward and it will accompany with the palatine now. The greater palatine artery give off the lesser palatine artery also which will supply the soft palate and it passes through the greater palatine foramen to supply the hard palate. So this greater palatine as the name itself suggests is going to supply the soft as well as hard palate and it descends through the greater palatine canal to enter into the oral cavity. Now here in this diagram you can appreciate this is your greater palatine artery. It is going downward and it will enter into the oral cavity also and come out as a lesser palatine artery. So lesser palatine artery is again a branch of greater palatine and greater palatine artery itself come out and run along with the hard palate. Then you will have the two more branches. One is known as pharyngeal artery, another is known as artery to pterygoid canal. Now these are the two branches, those will go posteriorly they are having backward course and I told you that in the posterior wall you have the sphenoid bone and in this posterior wall you have the two foramens one is known as palatinovaginal canal and one is known as pterygoid canal. So these two arteries will enter into those canals. So first pharyngeal artery the pharyngeal artery is going posteriorly to enter into the palatinovaginal canal and supply the pharynx. Another artery is known as artery to the pterygoid canal and this artery is again enter into the uh, pterygoid canal which is actually going towards the foramen lacerum. So in this way you should realize that the branches of the third part are exit through the different foramens which are present in different wall of pterygopalatine fossa. Now in this diagram you can see the sphenopalatine foramen. I told you that sphenopalatine foramen present on the lateral wall of the nose. So here you can see that this is the lateral wall of the nose and posteriorly you will have the inner opening of sphenopalatine foramen. Now through this inner opening of sphenopalatine foramen the artery is entering into the nose and it is supplying the lateral wall of the nose. Apart from that in this diagram you can also appreciate that this is your greater palatine artery and this greater palatine artery is coming out through this greater palatine foramen and it is running along with the lateral margins of your hard palate. It is running along with the lateral margins of the hard palate and it will supply blood to the mucosa of your hard palate while it is giving the lesser palatine branch that will come out to supply the structure of your soft palate. So at the end of this class of the third part of maxillary artery, you should first have the idea about the pterygopalatine fossa. You should have the clear cut idea about the boundaries and communication. Then you should read the third part of maxillary artery branches and you will realize that these branches come out through one of its opening or the foramen. So this is all about the maxillary artery. Thank you.